And good evening, I'm Erin Burnett. Out front tonight, the breaking news. President Trump is considering firing Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, a move that could upend the entire Russia investigation and lay the groundwork for Bob Mueller's firing. According to multiple people, the president is enraged over the FBI's decision to raid the office of Michael Cohen, his longtime attorney. Today at the White House, White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders was asked about what the president thinks of Rosenstein. Can I also ask, what about Rob Rosenstein? What's the president's thinking about Rosenstein in terms of his tenure at the Department of Justice? He did not appear to be very happy with him last night. And can you confirm that Rosenstein was the high-level DOJ official that signed off on the FBI raid? Uh, I'd refer you to the Department of Justice in terms of uh, their process. Uh, certainly, the president's voiced his frustrations, but beyond that, I don't have anything else. The president is frustrated, and tonight's development is crucial because it is the person who holds Rosenstein's job who can actually fire Bob Mueller. According to Justice Department federal regulations, quote, the special counsel may be disciplined or removed from office only by the personal action of the attorney general. So the special counsel is Bob Mueller. The attorney general is Jeff Sessions. Now, Jeff Sessions, of course, has recused himself from the Russia investigation. So the person in charge is Rod Rosenstein. It is his responsibility to oversee Mueller and make those decisions. Whether he is hired or fired, that's up to Rosenstein now. And as of December of last year, Rosenstein has publicly testified that he sees no reason to fire Bob Mueller. Have you seen good cause to fire special counsel Mueller? No. Thank you. If you were ordered today to fire Mr. Mueller, what would you do? As I've explained previously, I would follow the regulation. If there were good cause, I would act. If there were no good cause, I would not. And you've seen no good cause so far? Correct. So Rosenstein didn't see a reason to fire Mueller. Is that why his job is in jeopardy tonight? Pamela Brown is out front with this breaking development. And Pamela, you are breaking this story. What more are you learning at this hour about what the president is thinking about firing Rod Rosenstein? Well, Aaron, our team has learned that the president's consideration of firing Rod Rosenstein has gained urgency following the raid of the office of the president's personal lawyer. Sources familiar with this matter say this is one of several options on the table right now, including going so far as to fire Attorney General Jeff Sessions as well. This is what the president is weighing. Now, officials say if Trump acts, Rosenstein is his most likely target because installing a new uh, deputy attorney general could provide the check on Mueller that, that Trump is seeking. Uh, now, we should note, Aaron, uh, that not all of Trump's legal advisors are on board with this, but others are telling him that they now have a stronger case against Rosenstein. They believe he has crossed the line in what he can and cannot pursue, and they consider him conflicted since he is a potential witness in the special counsel's investigation because he wrote the memo that justified the firing of former FBI Director James Comey. So even though Trump has considered firing him in the past, Aaron, the possibility has taken on a more serious tone in recent days, according to sources we've spoken with. And of course, Pamela, to your point, uh, that memo supported what the president did and was used by the president to defend it. So to now fire him yep. and say you're conflicted because you did that to help me, obviously really hard to, to circle that square. You are also reporting more breaking news, though, tonight, Pamela, that the president canceled his trip to South America, scheduled to go this week. His economic advisor this morning thought it was still on. Turns out, no, it's not, and it's in part because of all this? That's right. Uh, we have learned that the president, who had already shortened his itinerary, itinerary for the planned trip to South America and had been grumbling to aides around him um, that he really didn't want to go, is staying behind in Washington in part to decide the next steps on potential changes at the Justice Department. This is according to two sources we've spoken with. Now, Sarah Sanders, the White House overall, has said that Trump is staying behind to oversee a response to the alleged chemical weapons attack in Syria over the weekend. But so it appears, Aaron, that there are a number of factors, uh, including not only just the, the monitoring the response in Syria, but also uh, what next steps, if any, he's going to take uh, for his Department of Justice. Now, sources are saying, Aaron, that Trump's anger has reached 
a boiling point. Mm -hmm. It has even surpassed previous outrage he's had over the Mueller investigation. One source said Trump views the raid on Cohen, which was ex executed, as you know, by the attorney's office, uh, U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York, and not Mueller, as a ruse and directly related to the Mueller investigation. According to the source who is familiar with the president's feelings, Trump believes Mueller is unregulated with few checks and balances on his conduct, mm -hmm. and this could be a turning point for the president. Aaron? And then a turning point, of course, for uh, the country as a whole, if that were to happen. Pamela, thank you so much with all yep. of those breaking details. Let's go now to David Gergen, who served as advisor to four presidents, Kerry Cordero, former counsel to the U.S. Assistant Attorney General for National Security, and Renato Mariotti, former federal prosecutor. David, this is... A, I'm sorry, a stunning development in many ways. The president tonight, Pamela reporting, considering firing Rod Rosenstein, who is the man who decides the fate of Bob Mueller. Well, we, we may be nearing a crisis point in, in all of these investigations. Uh, there, there are two steps that would have to be taken, and that is to fire Rosenstein and possibly Sessions, and then to put somebody else into place uh, who would then order the firing of Mueller. Uh, and it does seem to me, as uh, it, it's really interesting, the president, according to Gloria Borger's uh, reporting, is sitting down with Alan Dershowitz uh, this evening. Yeah. And that'll be interesting to figure out what uh, attorney, Alan... attorney, Harvard uh, professor. You know, he's very... Yeah. Yes, yes, but he, and he has a very hard line view on this, as you know. He's been very sympathetic to the president uh, all the way along on this. Um, and so, you know, conceivably, could Allen step into one of those posts? I, I, anything could happen, right? But the other thing is, Aaron, where are the Republican leadership? It seems to me, knowing how much, how fearful they are of the firing of Mueller, how they think it'll be a bad political mistake for the party, especially heading into the, uh, the uh, midterm elections. Why isn't there a Republican delegation trying to come down and see the president? There's nobody else in the White House who can talk him out of it. Why don't the Republicans try it? Uh, and that is a big question tonight. We're going to be joined by a Republican later this hour, Senator Kennedy. Kerry, how big of a deal would it be if the president fires Rod Rosenstein? It would be a very big deal, Aaron. You know, after watching this investigation for some time and watching the way that Rod Rosenstein has been exercising oversight and has been very public, um, both in his public statements and to members of Congress in open hearing, about the extent to which he is providing hands-on oversight, I've come around to the view that he really is the linchpin for mm -hmm. ensuring that the investigation continues in a way that is protected from political influence and continues to whatever ends it is intended to go towards. Um, he has insulated the special counsel's office from political pressure. He has, according to his own accounts, exercised oversight, meaning that he is consulting with the special counsel regularly yeah. about different directions that they might go in. And it does seem from this, the, at least the reporting that we're seeing on the Michael Cohn execution of the search warrant that he has determined that certain things are outside the scope of the special counsel's investigation, at least according to the reporting over the last day. So I think Rod Rosenstein has become a central figure and an incredibly important figure that um, is protecting the integrity of this investigation. Renato, what would this do to Bob Mueller's investigation? I mean, do you think, I, I mean, I, I suppose there's always someone. But on, on a practical level, could the president find someone to put in that position who truly would just go in and, and, and do what he says and, and fire Bob Mueller, uh, considering what it would do to their re reputation? Well, certainly he, he may be able to find some lackey who is going to try to do whatever possible to squelch this investigation. But it's not going to be as easy as he thinks, Aaron, because these, these cases are open in the FBI. They're open in the Justice Department. Literally, there are ongoing investigations and there are ongoing court cases. And what would have to happen is not just a new person to take over um, the role of, you know, attorney general or deputy attorney general uh, and, and potentially a new special counsel. Yeah. But then, you know, what would have to happen is somebody would have to go in and, and declare decline prosecution in all these cases. Somebody would actually have to close all these investigations. There's a lot of paperwork that comes along with that. And is somebody going to come in and do that? I, I think what might happen, Aaron, and what I hope happens for the good of this country, is that somebody comes in who has enough integrity to say, no, I'm not going to do that. Right. Uh, and then, we, then it brings this all to a head. Well, and of course, you also have uh, real crimes that have uh, you know, allegedly been committed 
uh, by the likes of Paul Manafort or 12 Russians. I mean, this is a lot easier said than done to say, oh, you're just going to pretend all that didn't happen. I mean, David, you know, this, this also comes, Pam's reporting, uh, that the president is now canceling that trip to South America, and he did so very suddenly. You know, this morning, his economic advisor, Larry Kudlow, was on the radio saying, I'm looking forward to going with him. Well, within, within hours, we found out the president wasn't going at all. He's canceling it because he wants to know, uh, figure out what to do about the DOJ. I mean, that's pretty specific. Well, it's, it, that is absolutely right. And this is not the first time Larry Kudlow has been surprised in his very short tenure there. He's trying very hard to keep the ship right and to navigate it well, yeah. uh, but it's very, very hard for him. I, I, listen, I, it, we're gonna, if he fires Rosenstein, if the president decides to fire Rosenstein, and it sounds like he's very close to doing that, uh, this is, we're going to look back and say this was Saturday Night Massacre in slow motion. This has been, you know, we've seen a process unfold now over a period of weeks uh, leading to the effort to d d get, get Mueller out of there. I, th I think the point is well taken. You know, when Archibald Cox was fired uh, way back in the Nixon period, uh, and he was essentially conducting the investigation, the, the, Leon Jaworski got appointed and carried it out. I, I think the chances of shutting down the Mueller investigation altogether I think it would cause such an uproar in this country. I think it would go well beyond trying to fire Mueller. I, and, I, and I would imagine the Republican Party at that point would find some spine and really tell Mr. President, you cannot do that. I mean, even Chuck Grassley today, of course, uh, chairman of the Judiciary Committee, Republican, said it would be suicidal yeah. to do so. You know, it's also interesting, yes. though, Renato, uh, Sarah Sanders said something today. You know, I went through the actual line, right, of, of the, the, the mandate for the special counsel, and it said mm -hmm. that the attorney general was the one, uh, the only one who had the ability to, to fire. And, of course, because he's recused himself, that's the deputy. Sarah Sanders today said that's not even true. And I just wanted to play the exchange for you and for our viewers. Here it is. Do you believe he has the power to fire special counsel Robert Mueller? Does he believe that's within his power? Uh, certainly believes he has the power to do so. Clarify something you said earlier. You said the president believes he has the power to fire Robert Mueller because usually most legal experts believe that he would have to order Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein to fire Mueller. And Rosenstein could, of course, refuse. I know a number of individuals uh, in the legal community, uh, and including at the Department of Justice, said he has the power to do so, but I don't have any further announcements no, on it. said that it is, they told me, I've asked, they've said that it's Rob Rosenstein oversees special counsel and only he has the power to fire the special counsel. Uh, again, we've been advised that the president uh, certainly has the power to make that decision. Um, I can't go anything Sorry. beyond that. I mean, it, 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 look, it's significant, Renato, on many levels. One, according to the regulations, she's wrong. The special counsel may be disciplined or removed from office only by the personal action of the attorney general, right? So that flies in the face of what she is clearly saying. But she's also saying, Renato, we've been advised. In other words, they've looked mm -hmm. into it. They've spent time looking into whether President Trump can directly fire Mueller. That's right. And a couple of things I would say. One way they could try to get around it, Aaron, is by putting in a new attorney general and then ordering that attorney general to uh, remove the regulations entirely, to get rid of the regulations. Huh. That so could you fire be one. Jeff and Sessions, change the rules, and then you can do it without Rod Rosenstein. Basically, yeah. that's okay. one way they could do it. But I will tell you, you know, one thing you're catching here, Aaron, and you're very keen in, in noticing this, is a sort of double speak that's going on here. What we hear from Republicans is there's no reason to protect Mueller. We don't need to pass this legislation to protect Mueller. Mueller's not in jeopardy. And then what we're hearing at the White House is, well, uh, we've already looked into it. The president has the power to do it and so on. There's a lot of double speak here. Mm -hmm. And I worry um, for, the, for the sake of the country, as somebody who is an American and somebody in law enforcement, uh, that what David Gergen is saying won't come true and that Republicans won't stand up if we have somebody who's under investigation, who, who goes through the extraordinary step of firing the people investigating. And this comes, you know, Kerry, as the investigation itself moves forward, right? Not only do you have the, the move, the, the, the close to unprecedented move to move ahead, right, with, uh, with, with rating three locations at least uh, related to Michael Cohen. Uh, we're learning tonight Stormy Daniels is cooperating with federal investigators uh, who, of course, are looking into this whole payment and the hush agreement. Um, a source familiar with the investigation is now describing as extensive and aggressive and that the team working on it is sizable. This is, this is related to p possible payments, bank fraud, Stormy Daniels. We're not even talking specifically about Russia here, and we're talking aggressive, extensive, and sizable. Right. Well, so it's it's still a little bit unclear from the reporting exactly how this, uh, it's being called a referral, was made from the special counsel's office yeah. to possibly the Southern District of New York. Um, it does look like it was the FBI Division in New York that executed the search warrants. So it's a little unclear how that relationship, but assuming that the... Um, mm -hmm. 
the Stormy Daniels piece of it, the Michael Cohn piece of it was um, spun off into a separate investigation. You know, this special counsel investigation is wide ranging. And if in the course of it they come across information that is evidence of other crimes, then they're within the FBI. They're going to send leads to other offices and they're going to yeah. follow up on that. They're not going to just look the other way. Final word, David. Yeah. I just want to say the final word, yes. Uh, listen, the, the, the president's action and getting so angry at Rosenstein uh, is, is not is not fair, and it, he's really been he's really been sliming him. As far as we can tell from all the reporting so far, what the what Mueller did, what the FBI and, and uh, did when it when it picked it up from Mueller, and then what Rosenstein did in approving it is all by the book. This is the president asserted today that attorney-client privilege is dead. It is not dead. There are exceptions written into the rule. Book for U.S. district attorneys that make it clear that in exceptional cases you can do this. I mean, I know it sounds odd because so many of us celebrate the attorney client privilege, but there are exceptions. And it's just wrong headed. And I think it's a mistake for the president to take action based on a misunderstanding or a misstatement of the facts.